What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about matplotlib widgets which are a way to make your plots interactive and dynamic so let us get right into it All right, so the basic idea behind math.lib widgets is to add customized UI elements to our visualizations to make them more interactive. So for example, you might have a simple graph of a sine curve that you visualize. And what you can do now is you can add UI elements that change certain aspects dynamically, interactively of this visualization. So for example, buttons, sliders, checkboxes, radio buttons that change aspects like the color, the title, uh, the line width, the line type, but also the data itself, for example, the amplitude and the frequency of the sine curve that is displayed. And this is what we're going to take a look at today. I'm going to code one example here from scratch. So I'm going to do it step by step coding myself. And then I have a bunch of examples here prepared for you in this directory here to show you di different aspects of matplotlib widgets. Now to get started, what we need to do first is we need to install matplotlib and we also need to install numpy. So we're going to say pip or pip3 install matplotlib and numpy in our command line. In my case, it's already installed. And then we're going to import, first of all, numpy as np, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Those are the usual imports. And then we're also going to import from matplotlib.widgets, uh, whatever we need. And for this particular example here, we're going to need a slider. And the slider is basically just something that we can change the value of, we can place it somewhere, we can then drag and drop or not drag and drop, we can drag the value in the slider to change certain things. And then based on this value, we can do something with the visualization. Notice that this is different than animating uh, a map of the visualization because it's not predefined what is going to happen, we can define it by clicking by dragging the UI elements. So we're going to start here by saying the amplitude is going to be 1.0, the frequency is going to be 1.0 by default. Um, and we're only going to adjust the frequency here for the simple example. So I'm going to just use one slider that changes the frequency. So you can get a very simple basic example here first. So we're going to say figure and axis is going to be equal to plt subplots. We're going to then say plt subplots adjust bottom equals 0.25. So we have some space there. And then we're going to define the x values. I'm going to use t here because we can consider this a time axis. And we're going to just say np lin space, we're going to start at 0.0. .0. We're going to go up until two times pi. So two times np dot pi. Uh, and we're going to generate a 1000 values in between. So just so we have the x axis, and then the sine curve is going to be amplitude times np sine of frequency times t. So this is just a basic sine curve, nothing too special here. Um, and then we're going to define the line itself. So line and something that we don't need is equal to axis plot, and then t for the x value s for the y value and the line width is going to be equal to two. So this is again, very simple. Now instead of just showing this, we're going to now at the functionality to change the frequency. So what we're going to do is we're going to create here first of all an axis for the slider, we're going to say x slider is going to be equal to plt axes. And here we're going to pass now four values in the list, first of all, the position x and y, and then also uh, the size. So we're going to say 0.25 for the position um, on the x axis, we're going to say 0.1 for the y position, we're going to say 0.65 for the width, and we're going to say 0.03 for the height. You can adjust these values to make it look like you want. Those are the values that I'm going to use here. Um, and then we're going to say face color is going to be equal. And again, here you can choose whatever color you like, I'm going to go with light, golden rot yellow. And then we're going to say now, on this axis, I want to place a slider. So I'm going to say slider equals slider, this is what we imported from the widgets here. This is our actual widget, our actual UI element. And here we're now going to say this is going to be placed on this axis here, it's going to have the text frequency, it's going to have 0.1 as a minimum value 0. Point, or actually not 0. 5.0 as a maximum value, and the initial value so val in it is going to be the frequency so 1.0. And now what we want to do is we want to say, there's a function called update, or you can call it whatever you want. It takes a value as a parameter. And then basically, we say the frequency is going to be the slider dot value. 
So slider.val. Um, or actually, do we need this as a parameter here? I'm not sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's see if we need it. So the frequency is going to be the value of the slider, and then we're gonna say the line is going to be changed because we're going to change the y data of the line to make it different to change the actual graph. We're gonna say amplitude, which is the same, times np sign frequency, which is now changed times t. So it's exactly the same formula as up here, but we now have it here with an updated frequency. And all we have to do now is we have to say figure canvas draw idle like this. And then to actually make this connect to the slider, we're just going to say slider on changed is update. And then we're going to say PLT show. So this is what we get as a result here. And when I now drag this, you can see that the graph actually changes the frequency of the sine curve changes. So that is what the use of widgets is. And this is just one example. This is just a slider. This is just a sine curve being changed by the slider, you can do a lot of different things with that, which is why I have prepared a couple of examples here. Um, so I'm not sure now if this value, I think we need the value because it passes a value. Doesn't it? Yeah, if we don't have a parameter, it doesn't work. I'm just not sure if I can also just access the value directly. Maybe this also works. Let me see. Yeah, okay, this also works. We don't need to access slider dot value, we can just get the parameter itself. Because when we change this is passed as a parameter. So this also works. All right, so this is the basic example that I wanted to code here from scratch, I want to show you now a couple of other examples, which are versatile. So this one here, uh, which one is this is the zoom in zoom out example. So what we have here is we have two functions zoom in zoom out, all they're basically doing is they're changing the x limit of the of the visualization. So it takes the current x limit, it changes it. Um, and it sets basically the range of the x axis. And we have two buttons here. So buttons are also widgets, UI elements. And what we do here essentially is we define two axes. Again, we have the buttons, we place them there. And we then say on clicked triggers these two functions. The result is very simple, we can zoom in, we can zoom out on the x axis, as you can see, the y axis does not change, because our function that we have here just changes the x limit. All right, so let's take a look at the next example. What do we have here? Here we have uh, I think radio buttons, there you go. So radio buttons are just selections that you can make. I'm going to run this right away. You have here three different things that you can choose from and you can just click on them and it changes the line type of the visualization. And this is a very simple um, script here. What we basically do is we define a radio button or radio buttons, uh, plural, we have three labels here. And all we do is we have this function plot type, it takes the label either line scatter or bar. And basically, then it decides how to plot the visualization, it clears the, the axis or the canvas every time it draws all that. And then yeah, basically, it's displayed, you can see we define radio buttons, we map this function, and then we just take the label that is passed and that decides how the visualization is being done. So also a nice use case. Uh, then we also have this script here, which is let me just see which one this is. Yeah, this is with the checkboxes. So basically, what we have here is we have two lines, we have a sine plot and a cosine plot. And all we do here with the check buttons is we toggle their visibility. So we define the UI element check buttons. And then what we do is we just say, okay, um, when I toggle the respective, um, the respective uh, function, the, the respective line, I just get uh, I just set the visibility to what it is not right now. So if it's true, it's not true. It, so so it's basically false. If it's false, it's true. That is basically what we do here. And the result is this, I can just toggle the visibility of these two lines. Um, the next example I have here is again using a slider. But this time we have two sliders. So what we basically do here is we have a circle that is defined as sine and cosine. So x and y are defined um, independence of cosine and sine of t. And basically, this allows us to adjust the width and the height of the circle or of the oval. Uh, yeah, also just just the use of two sliders here. And how you do that, of course, is you define two axes, you place them in different positions with the same size you have uh, the same function. And yeah, basically, depending on these two values that you get here, here, of course, we don't work with the parameter, here we take the values uh, of the sliders directly. But yeah, 
we again just map this to the slider and then it works. Uh, the next thing that we have here is a little bit different because now we're not changing anything about the line, we're changing the title of the plot. So here I have a text box and I can say something like hello world and when I press enter it takes this as the title of the plot. Hello world, this is a line. There you go. So this is also something that might be useful for presentations. Um, very, very simple code. We just have a text box. And what we do is we have a function submit text, we get the text, which is submitted on submit basically means when I press enter. And then this is set as the title of the plot of the axis, nothing too complicated. Uh, then we have another example here with annotations. This is a very interesting one, because it actually doesn't really add a UI element. I mean, yes, we have a button that clears everything. But the main functionality of this is not actually the button, the button is just a reset. The actual functionality here is working with the MPL connect function, which connects the pick event, uh, event to the on pick function that we define up here. Um, to keep it simple, what we basically do is we annotate points with coordinates. So we annotate, um, just a specific point with a specific text and the text is just the coordinates of this point. By clicking on a point, we add an annotation to this point with an arrow, uh, which is this fancy line here. And basically, all the button does is resetting everything. So we have this clear annotation function, uh, it just removes all the annotations, it clears everything. And this is what the button is for. So this is not very interesting. But we then have also this MPL connect to the pick function to the on pick function. And the result of this is we have a bunch of points, if I click into nothingness, nothing happens. But if I click on the different points here, you can see that their coordinates are displayed, and I can clear the annotations, I can do it again. Yeah, so this is also a nice thing that we can do here for presentations, maybe. Um, but this is not really a widget. This is just a functionality of working with with math of the behavior. Um, then we have also another use case for this one, you're going to need SK image in this case. Um, but yeah, it's just an example of loading an image and changing things about this image. So we have a simple image here, a moon image, and we can change the brightness, for example, and you can do that, of course, if you take the time to set this up with saturation, contrast and all the different values that there are. Uh, but yeah, this is something you can do, you can change the brightness level off, uh, off an image. And uh, maybe to show you how it's done, we have a slider again, we have the uh, where is it we import from SK image the exposure and what we do here basically is we adjust the gamma and off the gamma we adjust specifically the gain, which is the brightness. And then we basically change the image, which is this data dot moon, it's just a predefined image here or a image that's available directly from SK image. Um, and we can just change the aspect of this image. So we can just update the image here like this. Um, yeah, and then we have this example here, which is I think kind of cool, because what this allows us to do is again, use two sliders to point at a specific coordinate, like this, for example, again, can be useful if you're writing a paper and you want to have a specific graph, but you don't want to manually try all the different values, you can just go ahead and you can make multiple screenshots by just interactively doing this, uh, how it works again, not too fancy, we have two sliders again, two axes, and we just draw two different lines, depending on uh, the data of the slider. So the slider x de determines the x coordinate and the slider y determines the y coordinate. And that's basically it. So very, very simple, we just have a horizontal line, a vertical line, and we change the position of those two lines using the sliders. And then finally, last but not least, we have this uh, example here, which is a zoom example. So what we do here is we have a rectangle selector, this is also a widget. And this is not a widget that you can see right away. Uh, where is the plot now here? You don't see a widget here, but there is a widget and the widget is this rectangle selector, we basically uh, use it here. And what it does is it basically allows us to define what happens when we use it, we connect again, key press event, uh, or actually key press event is the reset, isn't it? No, it's not. Um, but but you can see here, I can zoom into parts of that image by just using this rectangle selector. So this is also some interactive behavior. Um, that we can do here. And toggle selector, I think R is for reset. This is how I configured it. So I can zoom in, I can press R to reset. Yeah, there you go. So I can zoom into specific parts of the image, I can go back, I can go further into it. Yeah, so this is just a very nice uh, feature, I can also change the proportions here. 
Um, this is also a widget and the possibilities are of course limitless. So you can use different widgets, you can go into the doc documentation and look up all the different widgets that there are. But this is just a very nice way to have interactive Matplotlib visualizations can be used for presentation for video for easily making screenshots for your uh, paper, even though then you should probably export them and not use a screenshot. Uh, or just to make actual applications. So maybe you want to have a dashboard, you don't want to build a web application, you don't want to build a TK, a TK inter application, you want to actually use Matplotlib itself, but you just want to add some elements to play around with financial data, for example. So this is what you can use this for. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.